Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Ganesha. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we play through one full three-player game. Now, I would like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos just like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with cool bonuses like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, the game is fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I move on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I am showing the game, and that lets me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. The main goal for all of us is to get as many victory points as we can before the game is over, and the way we do this is we are going to visit Ganesha's altar in order to take these various gems. We can then use those gems either on our board in the treasury area or in the destiny spots, and when they're up here in the destiny areas, those will give us more flexibility for taking more gems from the altar to then put into our area. Now the gems in our treasury can be placed out onto this mandala over here in order to score us victory points, but in order to do that we have to pay a gem of the same color or a yellow which can be spent to pay for any of the other gem types. So that's how we will get our points in the middle of the game, and once the game is over we will each have the opportunity to place our gems from our board onto the mandala one at a time and we then score the associated points. Now, each of the tracks that we put gems onto have a higher amount of victory points the closer you get to the front, which means if you score in the middle of the game, you will very likely get more victory points for those gems than if you wait until the end of the game. Now, the game itself is going to take place over 9 rounds, and if this was a 2-player game, then we would instead play 12 rounds. So, once all of that is done, the player with the most points will be the winner. The final thing to mention as part of the overview is the fact that when you play Ganesha, you can use the advanced spice variant that comes in the game. Now this uses these eight unique spice tokens and they're put out here onto the Ganesha altar, and I'll explain the details of how this module works at the end of the tutorial. At this point, I think we can now start playing the game, and for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the red player over here. Now we are the starting player, and we know that because we have this token in front of us, so that means we can now take the first turn of the game. Now the way a player's turn works is we are going to go through three phases in order, and the first phase involves us taking one or two gems from Ganesha's altar. Now in order to take two gems, we will have to have at least one in a destiny slot on our board, and we currently don't have any, so I'll talk about how that works soon, and instead we are just going to take one gem from these that are available. Whenever you take just one gem, you can take any of those that are out here on the altar, and I think we want to start by taking this blue gem here. After we have this in our hand, we can then move into the second phase of our turn, where we are going to place this onto our player board. So let's focus over here, and whenever we place a gem onto our area, we either put it onto a destiny spot or into our treasury. Now it's important to note that a gem in the treasury can never make their way back up to the destiny spot, but if we had a gem in a destiny spot already, you can push that down into the treasury to put the new gem in. Now all of the gems in the treasury can be used for getting points out on the mandala, but having a gem in a destiny slot will potentially increase our gem taking options in future turns, so I think let's place that over there. Now I'll explain how this will help us out on our next turn. After placing our gem, we then move into the third phase of our turn, where we have the option of sending gems over to the mandala to score points. Now those are going to come from our treasury, which is currently empty, so we are going to pass on that phase, and I will describe how that works later on in the tutorial. So our turn is done, which means play will move clockwise over to the green player, and they can start by taking one gem from the altar. In this case, they want to take this green gem, and they're going to put that into their destiny, and then obviously they are not going to be contributing any gems to the mandala. That means their turn is over, and the blue player can go, and they have decided to take this purple gem right here and place that into their destiny as well, and they are obviously not sending any gems to the mandala, so that finished their turn. This means it's time for us to take our next turn, but before we do anything, we first have to rotate this to show the two above us. Now this means we are still the starting player, but we are entering the second round of the game where we are the starting player, and once we have had three rounds in front of us, this is going to pass on to the next player. Now I'll talk about that more later, and at this point we can now take our turn. Now when we go to take gems from the altar, we now do have a single gem in our destiny spot, and that one is blue. This means we now have the option of taking one or two gems from the altar. 
Now, once again, if we take one gem, we can grab any of them, but if we go for two gems, then the first of those two must match a gem color that is within one of our destiny spots. Currently, we have a blue gem over here, so that means if we take a blue gem to start, then we can take a second gem in this turn. Now, I think that is a good idea, and in this case, I think let's grab this blue gem here. Now, after we've taken one that matches one of our destiny, we can then take any gem that was adjacent to where that first gem was grabbed, and the color does not matter. Now, in this case, I think we want to take this red gem here, so we are actually grabbing both of them. Next up, these will go onto our board, but before we move on to that, I would like to mention what would happen if we had gems of the same color in both of our destiny spots. Now, in this case, we once again have to start by taking a gem that matches the color if we want to take multiple, but when we go to take the second gem, we can take it of any color from anywhere on the board. It does not need to be adjacent to the first one taken, once again, as long as the first one taken matches the color on both of the destiny spots on our board. Now, obviously, we just have one gem there, so now we can add these onto our board. Now, we do have a decision to make at this point. If we placed this blue gem up there, then that means we would be able to take a more flexible set of gems on the next turn, as long as there was still a blue gem out there. But there's a possibility that both of the remaining blue gems could be taken by one of our opponents, and in that case, we would actually just be taking one gem on our next turn. Now we could play it a little bit safer and put a red gem up here, and that gives us two options for taking two different colored gems from the altar, and I think that's probably a little bit better than doubling up like this. Now, of course, we could use uh, one of these to kick out this one, but I don't really see a reason to do that at the moment, so I think let's go for this plan. Uh, we could, of course, send this down here as well, but I think having extra flexibility with these destiny spots is probably for the best. Now, at this point, we could send treasury gems to the mandala, but I think we are still going to wait on that. This means it's now the green player's turn, and they are going to start by taking a green gem. Now that does match a gem in their destiny, so that means they can take another gem as long as it is adjacent to the first one they grabbed, and they've decided to take this purple gem as well. After that, they can tell there's just one green gem left out on the board, so they are not going to place this here. They'll put it into their treasury and put the purple gem over there. Now that has finished up their turn because they do not want to send any gems to the mandala, so the blue player can go. As you can see, they have a purple gem, and there is just one over here on the altar at the moment, so they are certainly going to take this purple gem, and then because that matches with a destiny gem, they can take one of these adjacent ones. Now, they've decided there are three yellow out here, and that is going to leave them somewhat flexible, so they're going to grab this one here, and then they'll put that into their destiny spot. With blue done, we can now take our next turn, and the first thing that we have to do is rotate this to show that we are starting the third round as the starting player. Now we have to take gems, and if we grab a blue or a red, then we can take two of them instead of one. Well, I do want to take two gems, and we have several different options available to us. We could take this red and then grab the green. We could take this blue and then grab this yellow or the red. And of course, we could grab this red and then take one of these blues. Now, I think the best thing for us at the moment is to take this red and then grab this blue that was adjacent. And then I think let's put both of these into our treasury. Now, it's worth noting, once this round finishes, we are actually going to get new gems out on the board, so we won't be taking any more of the gems that are currently out there at the moment. Now, it is true that we could have sent this red up here to bump the blue down and then uh, use these blues to send them out to the altar to get points, but I don't think we need to rush on that just yet. We can tell that none of our opponents have any blue gems, so we can wait a little bit longer. Well, that's finished up our turn, so now the green player can go. And they've decided to take this green, and then they will take this yellow that was adjacent. After that, they are going to send this yellow up here, which will kick out that green gem from the destiny slot. And then they'll put this other green right over there. Now, at this moment, they are in the third phase of their turn, and they have decided to send gems over to the mandala in order to get victory points. The way this works is they have to select one gem color, and then they can send gems of that color over to the mandala, but they can only send one color gems within a given turn. Now, when you send gems over, there is usually a cost involved, and if you are sending a purple, green, red, or blue gem, then you have to sacrifice one of that color back to the bag before you send the rest over to the mandala. Now, as you can see, the green player has three green gems right here, so that means they could sacrifice one of these to send these two over to the mandala in order to score. Now, if, for example, they happen to have a yellow down here in their treasury, then that would give them a new option. 
Now, you can always sacrifice a yellow gem in order to send as many gems as you want of a single color over to the mandala. So that means if it was like this, they could sacrifice the yellow gem to send all three of these over to the mandala in order to score. The last option is if you have any yellow gems in your treasury, then you can send as many yellows from your treasury to the mandala at zero cost. So you never sacrifice anything when sending yellows over there. Now, obviously, the green player does not have a yellow in the treasury, so that's not an option. Now, they are going to select green for their color, and they can send these over to the mandala. And, of course, they have to sacrifice one green gem to do that. And this is going to go right back into the gem bag. After that, they can score these two green gems. The way this works is they are going to place these gems onto the matching symbols over here on the mandala, and you always have to start at the symbol that has the dots around it. So that means the first yellow gem will go here, the first red will go there, then green, purple, and blue. So this is the starting area. Now, as you can see, the first green spot shows a six in the middle of it, so they are going to place a green gem there and immediately get six victory points, bringing them up to six. Now they have one more gem to place down, and you always go clockwise from the previously placed gem. So they can place this right there, which has a 5 underneath it, so that gives them 5 more points, bringing them up to 11. Now as you can see, the next green spot shows a 2 victory point spot on it, and that is why the green player decided to cash in now, because they figured if they saved up to get another green, it's likely it wouldn't be worth potentially as many points, and instead they might want to work after some other things and make sure they have this in the bank for themselves. So they have now finished scoring and they have 11 more points than the rest of us. This means the green player's turn is done and that means blue can now go. And unfortunately for them, even though they have gems up in their destiny spots, there are no gems over here on the altar that are adjacent to other gems. So that means they're only gonna pick up one for this turn. Now they've decided to take this yellow gem and they're gonna put it directly into their treasury area. And I do want to mention that it's possible when a player goes to take gems that there might not be any gems on this altar at all. And in that case, you simply skip right towards the third phase of your turn where you can potentially send gems from your treasury over to the mandala. Now at this point, the blue player has finished their turn. So that means it's once again time for us to go. However, we can see that there is a three on top. And when we go to rotate this, it'll go back to the one. And what that means is we have to actually pass this clockwise to the next player and put the one face up on the top. And now we are going to clear off the gems from the altar. Those can be added into the bag. And then after shuffling this up, we have to draw new gems out of the bag. And we're going to put them down onto the altar so that we have filled up the appropriate area for our player count. In a two-player game, you just fill in the tan area. In a three-player game, you also fill in the blue areas. And in a four-player game, you fill in the red areas as well. After that, we can now continue playing, and at this point, the green player is the starting player, so they get to take gems first. Now, they have a yellow and purple gem in their destiny area, so they have decided they would like to take a yellow gem. They're going to take this one, and then they can take a uh, gem that is adjacent, and they want to take the red gem, considering there are so many red gems out here on the altar. After that, they want to place this red gem into that destiny spot, which kicks this yellow one down into their treasury, and they'll place this yellow one into their treasury as well. Now, at this moment, they could send both of these over to the mandala, because remember, whenever you send yellow gems, you don't have to sacrifice anything, but at this moment, they've decided to hold onto them instead. Now, that has finished their turn, which means the blue player can go. And it looks like they would like to take this purple gem, which matches up with one of their destiny gems, and then they'll take an adjacent gem. In this case, they're going to take this green one here. Now, they would like to actually place the green there, which bumps this purple down, and then this will go into their treasury. And at this point, they are going to send all three of these purple gems over to the mandala by sacrificing this yellow gem. Remember, one yellow gem sacrificed can let you send all of another color over to the mandala. So the yellow gem will go back into the bag, and then they can place the first purple gem right here, which shows six victory points. Now that is going to bring them up to six, and then the second one has a five, which will give them five more, bringing them to 11. They have a third one here, which covers up a three, so that is going to bring them from 11 up to 14, and that has finished their scoring. Now there is one more purple gem out here on the market and they considered waiting to try and get that and score it because that would be worth four more points. But they could also tell that the green player has yellows in their treasury and at least one purple. So it's possible green could have picked that up and scored the first two purple spots, which was worth 11 points alone. So blue felt it was important to get in and score these now instead of waiting for later. 
So the blue player's turn is done, which means we now get to go. And I think on this turn, we would like to cash out some blue gems because they are really quite lucrative and it's possible that our opponents could swoop in and maybe get rid of a yellow to place even a single blue down. That first one is worth seven points. And I think getting that now is probably better than waiting. Now, at the moment, we have three blue gems on our board, although one of them is locked up here in the treasury spot. And with that in mind, I think what we should do is target this red gem here and then take the yellow that is adjacent. Now, of course, we can take adjacent because that red matches this one in our destiny. And now what we should do is place this red one up here to kick out the blue. We have two red up here, but there are still three red on the board, so I feel somewhat confident we'll be able to get one of those. And then this will go down into our treasury, where we can then spend it in order to send as many of one color gem as we want over to the mandala. And in this case, we can send three blues. The yellow will, of course, go back into the bag. And then the first blue will get us seven victory points. The second one will get us three. And the third one will get us five. So that means we are just barely in the lead at this point in the game. After that, our turn is done, so the green player can go, and they have to spin this so that the two is face up. After that, green can take gems, and they do have a red up here in their destiny, and they've decided to use that to take a red and then another red, so it looks like our plan to take at least one red on our next turn is starting to get harder to pull off. After that, green has to add these onto their board, and they're simply going to put both of them into their treasury. And then they've decided to get a jump on the red scoring by getting rid of this yellow gem in order to score all of one other color. And they will, of course, score their two red gems. The first of these is worth five points to them, which brings them up to 16. And the second one is worth four, which brings them up to 20. The one after that was worth three and then four and then two. Obviously, they weren't close to getting to these over here, but they felt like getting in on the nine points from the first two was a good idea for them at this point in the game. That's finished the green player's turn, and now blue can go, and it looks like they have decided to make our next turn worse by targeting this green gem and then taking one adjacent to it, which will indeed be the last red gem that's on the board. Now, they have decided to put the red gem up here, and then they'll put the two green down in the bottom. Uh, that does mean they're setting themselves up to potentially only get one gem in their next turn, but it's potential that this yellow one will still be out there for them. They'll just have to see. After that, they are not going to score any gems, which means we can take our turn. And unfortunately, we have two red up here and there are no more reds. Remember, if you have matching colors up here and you pull a gem of that color, then you can take a second gem from anywhere of any color. But it looks like that did not work out for us. Now, I think what we should do is take this blue gem. We can put that up here, which will knock down a red. And that way, if these two are still there on our next turn in this round, we can actually pick both of them up because they are adjacent to each other. It's pretty common for the player in the last place to take only one gem for their last turn. So perhaps we have taken one gem for our second turn and we can take two for the last turn of this round. Now, we'll just have to see how that pans out. But for the moment, I don't think it makes sense to cash in any gems. So that has finished up our turn. And that means the green player can go again. So this is going to rotate to the three spot, and now they can take gems. And the only way they can take two is by grabbing this purple and then taking the green that's next to it. And they have decided they'd rather take two than one of the other ones out here. Next up, they are going to place this green gem up there, which will bump the purple one down. They'll put this purple one into their treasury, and they have decided they are not going to cash in any gems at this point. They are going to hold out to try and get more purple gems. The next scoring spot is four, then three, and then five. So if they are able to score three gems for purple, then that would be much better than just doing two. So that's finished up their turn, and now the blue player can go. And it looks like they can take a blue or a yellow gem. Now, they are somewhat impartial between these two at the moment, and they can tell if they take a blue gem, then we are not going to get two on our turn. So they think that is going to break the tie, and they are going to make our last turn of the round a little bit worse than it could have been. So blue is going to take a blue gem, and they have decided that they are going to put it up here. Uh, now, they could kick out this red or this yellow. Now, in a three-player game, there are just 10 of each gem color in the bag, and at the moment, it looks like there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of the red gems already showing. That means there's just three more in the bag, and it's possible those might not even come out the next time the gems are put out here, whereas at the moment, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of the blue gems showing, so that's slightly more likely to show up from the bag.
Now, instead of kicking out the red, they could go over here and bump the yellow down. That would let them spend the yellow to put the greens out, and that would be worth 8 points to them at the moment. But they currently don't see a lot of green competition, so they're just going to move the red out of their destiny spot and put the blue gem in. Next up, they could send a single green gem over to the Mandala, but they've decided against it, so that means their turn is done, and now we can go. Now we can take a yellow or a blue gem, and the yellow would potentially give us some opportunities to throw some of the higher uh, victory point gems out there, uh, whereas the blue would work well with this other blue. Uh, the next blue to score is three, but then after that, it's six points. So sending two blues out to the Mandala would be a really good move, although we'd have to do a little bit of setup to make that happen later on in the game. Now, I suppose if we don't have a yellow when we do that, we are going to have to have three blues instead of two. So let's just go ahead and take the yellow for the moment. After that, I think let's kick this red gem out of the destiny spot. As I said before, there's just three more red gems in that bag. So it's likely that isn't a very good thing for trying to pick up multiple gems. And uh, there are lots of yellows in there considering we keep throwing them back in the bag. So that should give us some good opportunities in the next round of the game. Now, at this point, we could get rid of these three red gems. One would have to be sacrificed, and then we could score two of them. Now, if we did three, then that next spot is two points, whereas if we did two, then that's a three and a four. Now, obviously, we can't do three at this moment, but we could wait. And I think maybe let's just sneak in now and cash in these points so that when somebody else comes in to score reds, they don't immediately go after the four and the three, which are more lucrative. This lower value two will be right there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of one red. And I suppose that does put one more red back into the bag. And then we can score this one, which will give us three points. That will bring us up to 18. And this one will give us four points, which will bring us up to 22. Well, that's finished our turn. And now we can see the green player has been the starting player three times. So this is going to rotate to the one and head over the blue player. And it's once again time for us to clear Ganesha's altar and refill it. We will, of course, go random from the bag for all of these placements. All right, it's now time for the blue player to start things off, and they have a blue and a yellow gem in their destiny slots. Now, they have decided they would like to take a blue and a purple. They're going to target this blue and that purple, and then they are going to actually place this purple up here, kicking the blue out, and then this blue is going to kick the yellow out. I suppose they could have just kicked the yellow out with a purple, but it still got to the same spot. At this point, blue could send gems over to the mandala, but they've decided to hold on for the moment. Now remember, at the end of the game, every single player is going to get to score the gems in their treasury area and their destiny spots, but we will score them one at a time. At the moment, they don't see a pressing need to send any of these out before anyone else, and when we score at the end of the game, you don't have to sacrifice gems, so they are just going to hold off for the moment. Now, they are only going to get two more turns for the rest of the entire game, so we are certainly getting close to the end. Now, after their turn, it is time for us to go, and we have a lot less gems in our area than our opponents do, and unfortunately, not that many more points, at least compared to the green player. So, we should now take gems, and if we take a yellow or a blue, we could get two gems, and I think we should certainly do that. Now, part of me wants to take these two blue, and then try to maybe score that with this blue on our next turn by kicking that one down. We can see that there are a couple blue over here already, so I think it's probably better to spread out our options by taking this blue and then taking this purple, considering there are a couple of purples out here as well. Now, it's true that there are quite a few purples out here that our opponents have grabbed, but we can also see that the purple scorings over here are 4, 3, 5, and then 3 before it goes down to the 2s. So that means the next 4 purple scorings are pretty good, and currently there are 4 purples amongst all of our gems that we have in front of us. There are 2 more out here, of course, so this might end up being a bad idea, but I'm going to give it a shot. Now, let's go ahead and kick this blue out, and then put the other one down there, and then we are not going to cash these blues in. All right, our turn is done, so now the green player can go. And they have decided to take this red, which matches up with their destiny, and then they're going to take this other purple, so I'm starting to think us taking a purple on our turn was indeed a bad idea, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Now, in this case, they are going to send both of these directly into their treasury, and then they have decided they are going to cash out these purples by getting rid of one yellow gem going back to the bag, and this is going to be a pretty big scoring for green. The next purple is a four-pointer, so that will bring them up to 24 points. 
then they will get three points, which brings them to 27, and then five points, which is a biggie. So that is going to take them from 27 up to 32. Well, green is done with their turn, so now the blue player can go. And they've decided to use their blue destiny gem to take that blue, and then they're going to take an adjacent one, which will be this yellow. Now, after that, they're going to use this yellow to kick the blue down, and then put the other blue over here, and they are not going to wait anymore. They're going to spend this yellow in order to cash in all three of these blues. The first of these is going to give them three points, which brings them up to 17. The next one gives them six points, which brings them up to 23. And after that, it is a four-pointer, so that brings them up to 27. That finishes Blue's turn, so now we get to go, and we have a yellow and a purple, which does give us a couple of decent opportunities out here to do something. Now we could take this yellow and the blue and put both of them down over here and then get rid of the yellow to score three blue immediately. That would be worth four plus three plus two points, which is nine points total, and that's not too bad considering if we don't do that and an opponent takes this, then they would potentially squeeze in over here and get the four-pointer. Now, it is worth noting that these are the last three blues in the game because we're not going to pull any more out of the bag. So that means in this case, it wouldn't make any sense at all to spend a yellow because we would have all of those blues reserved for us during the end game. Uh, now, that's not a bad option for us, but we could also take a yellow and a purple or a yellow and a green, or I guess we could take a yellow and a purple as long as we want to take two gems total. So that's a decent number of options. Now, I think having full control over the blue scoring without actually having to spend anything to get it is probably a good idea. So yeah, let's go ahead and take these two, and then we can definitely add the blue to our treasury. And after that, I am tempted to put the yellow up here because that would have us having two yellows, which would potentially let us get non-adjacent gems. But I don't think it's likely that either of these yellows will still be there for our next turn. So let's slightly increase our options. Actually, I want to slightly change how we put these gems down, because instead of putting the blue one down over here, let's actually knock this yellow one down. The reason for that is because now we can score the yellows, and if you remember, whenever you score yellow, you don't have to sacrifice anything, and at this point, we would be the first person to score yellow, and those first yellow spots are pretty high in points compared to the other yellow spots. So let's go ahead and jump on this right now. As you can see, the first yellow spot will give us three points, bringing us to 25, and the second yellow spot gives us two points, which ties us with the blue player at 27. After that, it goes to two, and then one, 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 before it goes back to two, two, and then three, all the way over there at the end. So I think sneaking in and grabbing these points right now is certainly a good idea, especially considering we didn't have to spend any gems to do that. Well, our turn is done, so green can go, and they have decided they want to take this green and this red. And then they're going to put the green up in the destiny spot and bump the red down. Now they have three red in their treasury, so they could get rid of one back to the bag to score two of them. But they can tell there's just one other red out here. And they think it probably makes sense to hold on to this to get more points during end scoring, as opposed to trying to jump on that scoring right now. So they are not going to score anything, which means it's now the blue player's turn. And this is the start of the ninth and final round of the game. So this is the final turn for the blue player. Currently, they have a purple and a yellow in their destiny, and they have decided they are going to take this purple and that yellow. And then they'll put both of them into their treasury, and they've decided not to send any gems over to the mandala at this point. Well, that's their turn done, so now we get to go, and we can take a yellow or a green. Now, that yellow is going to be worth two or one victory points to us, whereas this green could potentially be worth two, uh, four, three, or two points, I guess they do get down to one point over there. Now, our opponents each have two greens, so that's hypothetically filling up all of these spots, but there is still a three victory point spot there and two, so I think taking the green is the clear choice for us. Now, we can put that over here, and I don't see a reason to place it into either of these destiny spots, and there is certainly no reason to try and cash out any of these on the mandala. So that has finished our final turn of the game, and now the green player can take the last turn of the game, and they are simply going to take this yellow. Now, they could use this to discard it in order to score these three immediately before the blue player could score their one red. It looks like the next red spots are two, four, and three, and then there's a two over there, but they think it probably makes sense just to hold onto this so they are not going to score. And at this point, we have completed nine full rounds of the game, which means we have reached the end of this three-player game. Now we can go into end game scoring, which starts with each player moving all of their gems from the destiny spots down to their treasury. 
and now it's time for us to place gems onto the mandala. Now the way this works is we are going to find the player with the least number of points and they are going to start and if there's a tie as there is in this case then the younger player between those two is going to break the tie. Now I'm just going to say that us as the red player are slightly younger than the blue player let's just go for that so that means we are going to break the tie and then we are going to go clockwise starting with us and going around the table with each player putting a single gem down and then scoring the associated victory points under it. Now, as you can see, we have blue, purple, and green, and the next green spot is two points, the next purple spot is three, and obviously we are the only ones with blue, so we don't have to worry about anyone else coming in and taking those away from us. Now, I think that we should place the purple down. The next ones are twos and then ones, so this is the ideal time for us to score that purple gem. So we will get three points, which is going to bring us up to 30, and then moving clockwise, the green player can place out a red, a green, or a yellow gem. In this case, they want to play a yellow gem because that spot is worth two points, whereas the next four are worth one point each. So green gets two points, bringing them to 34, and now blue can place a yellow, green, purple, or red. Well, they can tell the next red and green are two, and then after that is four, so they want to wait on both of those. And they can see the next yellow ones are effectively theirs because they're the only ones with yellow. They are also the only ones with purple, so they are going to play out a yellow essentially as a stall for the red and green scorings. So that is going to give them one point, and now we can place out. Now we still want to wait on the green because we also don't want to take that two-point spot when we could potentially get fours or threes. So let's put this blue out here, which will give us four victory points, bringing us up to 34. After that, the green player has to go, and they only have green and red, which means they are forced to fill in one of those two somewhat lackluster scoring spots. In this case, they've decided to place the green gem down, so that is going to give them two victory points, bringing them to 36. Next up, blue can go, and they are certainly going to place this green there. That is going to give them four points, bringing them up to 32. After that, we should score our green, because that is going to give us four points, which brings us up to 38. And then moving on, the green player is going to place their other green gem down here in order to get four more points, which brings them up to 40. After that, the blue player can place once again, and they do not want to put the red down. They still want to wait that out. So they're going to put this yellow one over here, which will get them one point. And then we can go, and we don't have a decision to make. We only have one color left. So we can put the blue here, which is going to give us three victory points. And then the green player does not have a decision. They must place this red over there, which is going to give them two points. So that is going to bring them up to 42. And after that, the blue player will put their red down over here, which gets them four victory points, bringing them up to 37. Now, after that, we have one blue left, which is just going to get us two points, which gets us to our final score of 43, and I don't think that is going to be enough. Uh, moving on from us, the green player has two gems left. They're going to put this red right here, which is going to give them three points, bringing them to 45. Then over here, the blue player is going to put this green there, which gets them three points, which brings them to 40. After that, green will place their last gem, which will get them two points, that gets them to 47 points, and then the blue player can put their last two gems out. This purple is going to be worth two points, bringing them to 42, and this other one is also worth two points, bringing blue to a final score of 44. So green is victorious with 47, blue is just barely in second with 44, and we came in last, and that completes one full three-player game of Ganesha. Now, before I wrap up this tutorial, I would like to discuss the advanced spice variant that can be integrated in with the game. The way this works is you take these eight spice tokens and you shuffle them up, and then you select a number of these equal to the player count. So in a three-player game, we might take three of these off the top, we put the rest face down on the side, and then we have to place these onto the altar area so that there is at least one space between them, but they can go anywhere within the area where you put gems for the player count. Once you have placed these out, these can be flipped over, and then you will see the board just like normal, and that means when you put these gems out, you will actually end up putting the gems on top of these spice tokens. From this point on, the game plays like normal with the added rule of whenever you remove a gem from a spot that has a spice token, you can immediately activate the effect of that spice token, and there are eight different spice token effects that show up on these tiles. Now, each of these effects are explained in detail on the back of the rulebook, and this one, for example, is Clove. 
That says if you place any gems onto the mandala on the turn where you removed a gem from this spice tile, you may sacrifice a gem of any color, not necessarily the color that matches the gems that you put down onto the mandala. Another example is over here. This is Ginger, and it says when you remove a gem from that spot, you give the gem from this hex to another player, and then they must give you a gem of a different color from their treasury if possible. Our third example over here is Black Pepper, and it says that when you remove a gem from the spot, you can then return to the bag any gem from your treasury, and then draw one random gem from the bag, which is then placed into your treasury. Now these are just three examples of the eight overall spice effects that come into play when you place these tiles out, and it's worth noting that at the end of a round, you are actually going to clear off all of the spice tiles when you clear off all of the gems. Then these are going to get shoveled back in with the other spice tiles that were not used in the previous round, and then you will once again take a number of these spice tiles and put them out onto the play area so that there is at least one space between them. You flip them over and then once again refill the board with the gems as normal. Well, at this point, I have now covered just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Ganesha. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.